Hello and welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor where we're going to talk about precipitation reactions and writing net ionic equations for these precipitation reactions. Now, it's a great example in chemistry of when the title of the section is super long and, and complicated sounding, but now that you have a little background in what we've been doing, I hope you can see that it's not going to be that big of a deal. In the last section, we wrote this long list of uh, what basically governs when a compound is going to be able to be soluble in a solution of water or not. And we had practice with basically figuring out if something is going to dissolve or not. And I told you that was going to be important in the future and this is when it starts to become important. So let me take you on a journey of where we've been and where we're going so you can see how it applies. We did quite a bit of, of work on acid-base reactions and we talked about the fact that acids you know, dissolve in water, bases generally dissolve in water, they come together, the hydrogen in the acid and the OH hydroxide in the base generally want to form water. And then we talked about writing those reactions down, doing a lot of calculations, but we also talked, if you remember, about writing those net ionic equations for those acid-base reactions. And we basically said that when you write everything out, you know, like the acid dissociates into ions, the base dissociates into ions, and then when they form, for all of the acid-base reactions we looked at so far, and, and look at, you know, several sections ago, they generally want to form water. The H comes with the OH and they form water. And in general, okay, most of those other I those ions in that were present are still in solution. They were in solution before, and they're, solution they're in solution after the reaction proceeds to completion, right? So we said that, hey, those are there, and they're important, and they participated in the sense that they were there, but they just kind of spectated. They were spectator ions, we said. You know, they were dissolved before, they're dissolved after, they didn't really form anything new. They're just floating around in water before, and those ions were floating around in water afterwards, so they didn't really generally participate in anything meaningful. So we basically stripped those out of the ionic equation, and then what we were left with was a net ionic equation, which is kind of like boiling everything down, so to speak, to the, to the, you know, to the, to the uh, actual thing that happened, you know, H plus OH gives us H2O. Those are the net ionic equations that we've done so far. Now this net ionic equation um, kind of uh, idea applies to much, much more than acids and bases. It's just how we introduced it. A net ionic equation is any time when you take reactions in aqueous solution and you take those spectator ions away and then whatever you're left with, that's what really has happened chemically. And that's what we're going to do in this section. We're going to have, generally, we're going to have two items that we're going to mix together and see what happens. And they're going to be in aqueous solutions. So we'll have a solution of something here, solution of something over here, you know, and we mix them together. Now there's only two things that can happen. Either a reaction is going to happen or a reaction is not going to happen. How do we figure out if a reaction is going to happen? Well, when you think about it, let me go back to the other situation. What's going to happen if no reaction happens? Well, if they're both in aqueous solution already, and they're both dis dissociated, both of these things we mix together are already dissociated into ions. If we mix them together, and the products that they can form, you know, if we rearrange the, you know, the elements there and get new products, if the products that they form um, are all soluble in water, you know, based on this chart here, if everything on the product side of the equation is soluble in water, that means that, yeah, you can write a chemical reaction down, but since everything is soluble, everything's still floating in solution, dissociated, then nothing really happened, right? So if you take two things and you mix them together and, and you still get a solution with, with all the ions floating around in there, then really nothing chemically has happened. Everything is still floating around before and floating around after.